You know, we haven't talked to James Jones in a while. Running into Seti's on Speak today. Let's bring him out. Former uh, nine-year NFL veteran, third-round pick to the Packers. Just walking. So now he's doing. No, those are slacks. That's yep. not. Those yep. aren't warm-ups. Uh, no, these nice, nice little he, slacks. He, I don't like. I'm not a warm-up guy. <laughs> no warm-ups. You, you you didn't play ball. You didn't rip the warm-ups off, man. You, nah. What's what's so funny about that? <laughs> he likes to see himself as an oh, okay. <laughs> Because he goes to the club and can shoot an occasional There, there you go. There you go. So do you remember uh, your birthday on Sunday, by the way? Yes. Now let me yes. guess. Let me guess. 40. 40 good ones. 40 good ones. I'm getting old, man. <laughs> 40? 40 good ones, yep. So do you remember, did you go to the combine? Yes. Did you feel it helped you? Absolutely. In my position, yeah. Because you ran well. Well, not only ran well, I was a young kid from San Jose State. Um, my story's kind of crazy. I was like the 100-rated receiver coming out of college, which <laughs> is absolutely crazy. I got invited to the combine a couple days before. So when I went to the combine, I'm like, I can't wait to show y'all what I got. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't wait. I, I, was all about, I was all about competing. I wanted to show them what I got. So, yeah, I went there. I ran 4-5, did 22 on the bench press. Who, I killed on the field. Who was the best that. receiver that you looked at and thought, okay, he's better than me right now? Calvin. Well, Calvin was better than a lot of people. Yeah. So Calvin, you looked at but, Calvin. And but, but other than that, I mean, I just looked at Calvin. I'm like, this dude is huge. He ran 4-3. I've already been watching his tape. He's phenomenal. But all the other dudes that were there, I'm like, they're not better than me. You know, that, that that's just that's just how I felt. They're not better than me. The Dwayne Bowes, the Robert Meachams, the Buster Davises, all those that dudes that were there that you went never the first felt round. They were... The Ted Ginns at the so, receiver spot. I'm like, they're not better than me. Yeah. Ted Ginn was a great returner, yeah. actually ended up being mm -hmm. an Ohio State guy. So when, when you hear about J.J. McCarthy flying up the boards, l rumors travel fast. Mm -hmm. Did you know coming out of the combine yeah. from conversations, mm -hmm. did, gen did NFL guys go, yeah, we're drafting you? No. no they didn't? No. no. Nobody? No, no. They, 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 I mean, it was more of we like you. You know, you had a really good pro day. We, we seen your tape. You know what I mean? We, we got you on our draft boards and all that type of stuff, but not like we're going to take you. No, that that that. That's I mean, all you do is eat Kit Kats and Snickers. To be honest with you, I never, I never talked to the Green Bay Packers at the combine. Not once. Not one time. I talked to the Atlanta Falcons a lot, and I'm like, I, I came out of the combine telling my people I'm going to the Falcons. Like, I know that for sure. Every time the Falcons is on the clock, get your phones ready and <laughs> <laughs> all that type of stuff. That might be us. I never talked to the Green Bay Packers. So never. yesterday, Michael Penix ran. Woo. He ran as a quarterback. I don't even know if quarterbacks run. And ran well. Like 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 a receiver. <laughs> like a perimeter receiver yeah. a little bit, right? Yeah. Right? So I think it helps him. 100%. Right? Number one, as we sit here, just take his pro day out of the way. We know we he can throws truly well. sit here and say mm -hmm. that he's arguably the best passer in the draft. You know, especially in the pocket. Obviously, the off-schedule throws and all that type of stuff out of the pocket, you get that to Caleb. Yeah. But inside the pocket, this dude is phenomenal, right? So coming in, we all knew Penix in the pocket is a really good quarterback. He's going to be a really good quarterback in the league. And now he just showed you that I have the Patrick Mahomes. I have the Joe Burrow. I have the Aaron hey. Rodgers in his prime. I have the Russell Wilson to where I'm not – I don't want to run – but if I have to, okay, so I will get out of it. Let me give you the last two quarterbacks that did this. Herbert mm -hmm. and C.J. Stroud. <laughs> we didn't think they ran either. Yeah. And then Herbert last game mm -hmm. for Oregon against the Badgers. Yep. And C.J. Stroud against Georgia. Yep. And we all went, oh, they run? Exactly. So, I mean, I to me, when you have I, – I, I never at Ohio State thought C.J. Stroud was mobile. No, no doubt, because he, he was did, protected. They, they protected. He was well protected, him. yeah. So I, I honestly watched this yesterday, and I thought, oh, he may move up mm -hmm. 10 spots yeah. for that. And even Penix, when you watch Penix play the game, Washington's offense was so good, the ball came out of his hands extremely fast. He knew exactly where he wanted to go with the ball. Yeah. But this just showed me that – he has the ability to make those off-scripted plays if he has to. If he gets to one of these teams that does not have an offensive line like Washington, maybe is not running the offense to where the ball is coming out of your hands extremely fast, I can create. I am mobile enough to create. And don't forget, before his injuries at Indiana, he used to run. Right. He used to get out of there. So I think this helps this man tremendously, jumping up them draft boards. Also, 
Deshaun Watson has two ACL surgeries. Mm -hmm. He got a guaranteed deal. And Burrow's he, hurt every year. And, he, and he's fine moving around. He's moving around just fine. Joe fine moving around. Everything yeah. now is so different than a decade ago. The mm -hmm. surgeries are all cleaner. No doubt. In the last, I would say, two years, maybe mm -hmm. three, almost as a rule, yeah. If they say you're out eight weeks, nah. you're ready to play in five. No doubt, no doubt. The, the technology and everything they got going on now, you know, no matter, really no matter what you do, you see people coming off of ACLs faster, Achilles faster, hamstrings faster. Everything is starting to become faster. That used to be six to eight weeks. Now it's four weeks. Now it's two weeks. Okay, so Marvin Harrison, and his dad was quirky. He's yeah. not talking. He's not doing mm -hmm. combine. He's not mm -hmm. doing anything. Receivers are just different. Oh, you guys man. are all, I mean, you acknowledge that all you do is eat Kit Kats and Snickers That's and you it. run a 4-3. That's it. You admit it. <laughs> yeah. So, like, you've never done a, a sit-up or a burpee in your mm -hmm. life and you're di ripped up. <laughs> so, in go back to again, when you were getting drafted. Yeah. Did you notice guys that were a little quirky, a little different? Mm-hmm. And did you play with guys? Because the receiver is almost the NBA player no, of the NFL. There, there's no doubt about it that you play with guys that, that are like this. But for me... I don't like this at all. I I, I, tr I truly don't. And the main reason I don't like it is because I'm a competitor. And I understand this man is in a great situation, right? Turn the tape on. I'm not, I'm not going to do anything. But it's been a lot of dudes like that. Calvin Johnson was like that. And if we really keeping it 100, Calvin Johnson was better than you in college. Calvin Johnson had a pro day. You know, it's a lot of dudes that have your talent, if not better talent, that still did the pro day to show these scouts that what y'all see on film that ain't nothing watch when y'all see me out here at my pro day and i'm cool with you not working out at the combine but for me where's the competitive nature like if i would have seen malik neighbors the way malik neighbors pro day was I'm calling my agent, like, even if my pro day pass or my pro day coming up, like, I'm finna show these dudes that Malik Neighbors ain't got nothing on me. That's just that's just the competitor in me. I don't like these dudes nowadays, man, just, you know, I'm not doing nothing. I mean, the number one pick in the draft worked out at his pro day. You know, like, you're not, you're not, gonna, you're not gonna show nothing. And I understand, like I say, you are a really good receiver. You're probably gonna be the first receiver off the board. But show us that you got a little competitive nature. Now, the Raiders, you, you work on the Raiders broadcast. Mm-hmm. 13th pick is interesting. Yeah. Because nothing against. It's his first year, mm -hmm. but they got to find their quarterback. Yes, they, they thought do. they had it in Derek Carr. The yeah. only time they've had it, Kenny Stabler was it mm -hmm. for a long time. Uh, you know, Jim Plunkett for a while was it. Yeah. Rich Gannon. Yeah. But by and large, the Raiders have been in a quarterback deficit. Yeah, Derek for, Carr was the most consistent one they had in a long time. Not a lot of winning seasons. Yeah. Though. So my take is you got to get a quarterback. Yeah. Do you foresee them moving up or back where? Because they're not going to get Caleb. They're not going to get Drake I, May. I mean, to be honest with you, I think they're really good where they are. Because how much better do we think Drake May and J.J. McCarthy and Jaden Daniels is better than Penix? Like, like, what's the gap? Is it this? Is it this? I don't think it's One of those dudes is falling to you. One, one of them is going to fall to you, right? It's a lot of other teams that need other stuff after those first three, unless it's another team that trades up in there. But either way, if it's another team that trades up, one of them quarterbacks is going to fall to you at 13. So for me, unless you are sitting in this, in your war room, are you watching tape right now and you're like, we really, really, really love Jaden Daniels. We know exactly the offense we want to run with him. We want to plug him in our offense. Like you just fell in love with a dude. Then trade up and go get your guy. But if you're like, hey, JJ's here, Penix here, Daniel's here, they all around the same. One of those dudes yeah. is going to fall to you, in my humble opinion. I don't think it's no, you don't have to risk nothing in trading up to try to go chase a quarterback. That's the vibe you get with the Raiders. That's the vibe I want them to have. <laughs> <laughs> now, here, here's an interesting one. J Mac uh, threw this up the other day. Mm -hmm. He said, Devontae Adams has squawked a little. Huge value. He's a dominant number one. To yes, me, second, is. third best receiver in the league. And uh, you're bringing a new quarterback mm -hmm. in, demanding receiver. You may be better off. You just need players. Yeah. You need players. Yeah, you can't trade D.A., though. You okay, so tell J-Mac, you why not? You, you, the, num the number one reason you cannot trade Devontae Adams, because uh -huh. if you do bring in a young quarterback, Devontae Adams is his best friend. And what I mean by that is, there's very few receivers that create separation like Justin Jefferson, Devontae Adams, 
Keenan Allen. It's the reason why he have 100-plus catches a year. It's not because his quarterback got this great arm. It's because he creates separation immediately. When we seen Dak Prescott have his best years, he had Amari Cooper, who creates separation immediately. Also, a lot of these veteran – everybody plays a zone now. A lot of these veteran guys – Puka did this as a rookie. Yeah. They manipulate zones. No, they're no, always no, open. No question. But you need a guy like Devontae Adams to where you know he's open. Right? You're you're not an Aaron Rodgers, you're not a Patty Mahomes to where Devontae Adams got a defender right on him and you're putting the ball in certain spots as a rookie. It's too much going on. You need to know a guy has won right now. And that's what Devontae Adams brings. So if you are even going to think about trading up for a young guy, you can't let a guy like Devontae Adams walk out of the building and you're like, okay, I'm going to bring in a rookie or some of these other receivers whose they hair going to be on fire because they're going to look at the defense, got to read the defense. Then they're going to turn around and they're going to see Jalen Ramsey press coverage on them. You know, and then now you're thinking about that and then you still got to worry about getting open. And then not only that, you got a young quarterback to, oh my goodness, they bring in this blitz and that blitz. And now he's, he's worried about all that. It's, it's it's not going to work. I would love for them to keep Devontae because he is going to be that quarterback's best friend. Okay, so years ago, quarterbacks kind of felt all the same. Mm -hmm. Big guy, tall guy, sat in the pocket. Yeah. Now they're small, some work outside the pocket, some big. They're different, mm -hmm. and I think it's great. Yeah. Kyler Murray and Josh Allen look like two, <laughs> di two different to sports. Totally different players. Yeah. Love them both. Yeah. And so – same with personality. Uh, Kyler Murray is a gamer. Kyler Murray is quiet. Aaron Rodgers mm -hmm. is single, wealthy, his own dude. Yeah. Brady was more corporate. Yeah. Panning, Peyton Manning was more corporate. And so here you have Caleb Williams. Yeah. He's painting his fingernails. <laughs> and, and, and he said, my mom did that years yeah. ago. And I, I didn't do it. It doesn't. He jumped into the stands with his mom. Yeah. Uh, we've seen stuff in his nails, the pink phone. I, I don't care. I do think mm -hmm. now there there are you can there are two things can be true. Mm -hmm. I do want after games and at the podium for yeah. a quarterback to be very Dak like. Yeah, yeah. Diffuse drama, mm -hmm. quiet that's, the noise. That's huge. Yeah. Those are big moments. Those, that's Fifteen huge. minutes, yeah. twice a week. Mm -hmm. I need a grown up. Yeah. I don't give a rip who you date, what no, you wear. So, no so what, how did that land for you when you heard people were bummed by no, or you, outraged you, by it? You hit it right on the nose because at the end of the day, right, you're coming into the National Football League and all you have to do is put your head down and work. You are the franchise quarterback, right? You have the keys to the ship. Don't come in here all Hollywood like <laughs> it's my way this way. Put your head down and work. At the end of the day, you're still a rookie. Put your head down and work. When you get out here and you make plays, that's all them dudes in this locker room is going to care about. Right. We got us one. They don't care what your nails look like. They don't care what color your phone is. Bruh is going to help us win games. Right, right. And we see that out here on the practice field. But the biggest thing, like you said, is when you step up to this podium. Because you can't step up to this podium as the Chicago Bears quarterback and – after you just lost or might have had a bad game blame or whatever people. it was, not only blame people but say, I want to go home and hold my dog. Hold on, bro. Like, we just lost. Like, you need to get up here and you need to say the right stuff because that's how you win over a locker room too. I tell my young quarterbacks now, I don't care if you make a great throw. It's your fault. You're the quarterback. That's the mindset that I put into my young quarterbacks that I coach right now. We seen them drop it. <laughs> we seen that it was a dot. Every we seen the whole crowd say, "Oh, we we seen all that." But at the end of the day, I want you to understand you're the leader of this team. So if you pat your chest, you know how much more these dudes in this not only in this little league gonna respect you. And I've been in the NFL locker rooms. When you pat your chest, that's my bad as a quarterback, as a leader. You earn so much respect from the dudes in the locker room. You know what I mean? My my first my rookie year. True story. My rookie year, I'm, I'm starting my first two games because uh, Greg Jennings had got hurt. Brett so Favre. I'm out there with Brett Favre. Obviously, you know, I'm a rookie running around with my head cut off. I have two MAs in the game, missed assignments, where I run the wrong route, oh. and Brett Favre is looking at me, right? <laughs> and he ends up scrambling and throwing the ball to, um, to, to Donald Driver, right? We get in a meeting. Coach is chewing me out in the team meeting. And this is with the offense and the defense. He is chewing me out. If you don't know what you're doing, you are not going to play. We don't care about your talent. We don't care about none of that. And Brett said, hold on, coach. I told him to do that. 
No, he didn't. But Brett stood up in that meeting and said, Coach, I told him to run those routes. And my coach was like, man, if he told you to run those routes, you got to let me know that so I don't write them down. As him. And I'm just sitting back like, this dude is a real dude. Like, and the respect I have for Brett right then and there, you know what I'm saying? You and didn't then, run and anymore. Then even, didn't... And then, obviously, he already had the locker room. He was the leaders. But when I was telling guys, Brett lied for me. They was like, for real? What? You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, that's why he's the leader of our team. Just little stuff like that. Like, pat your chest first. You know what I mean? And I'd, I'd never looked at Brett to say no more. Uh, Brett couldn't do nothing. Brett could yell at me. He could throw the ball at me after the play. All that type of stuff. Like, he the leader. He our dog. He got my back. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you got to make sure you walk into the locker room. That's the type of dude you are. The same when J-Mac screws up, I go to bosses say, it's my fault. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's, I'm like far. I'm that, always and for the that's team That's why you're first. a true leader, man. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's me, Uncle Colin. Subscribe here to get the latest from the herd, including exclusive behind-the-scenes videos and more, wherever you may be, however you may be watching. Thanks again for making us part of your day.